hello guys hope you are doing well and today we are going to talk about um, some few things about uh, GCMS gas chromatography mass spectrometry and analytical uh, chemistry when it comes to perfumes and this is uh, intended uh, either if you're a perfumer or actually you're just interested to know about that um, and we're going to mention some of the things I apologize for the video quality because uh, I'm just showing from the PC here uh, some shorts and I'll show you some uh, things that we have here you know uh, in order for the things to be clear about the GCMS uh, but I, I could not edit it as a presentation to the video directly so let's just jump right in basically guys I've been asked this question a lot uh, are perfumes um, or can perfumes be replicated with uh, GCMS if somebody has a GCMS can they actually uh, perform a GCMS on a perfume and just repeat it uh, the answer to this is, is not quite simple for several reasons the first is actually um, the first thing uh, when you talk about uh, most most perfumes in the world they are composed predominantly of um, aroma chemicals and rarely naturals are used altogether and um, now when we talk about aroma chemicals most aroma chemicals are just one chemical two chemicals most but not every lots of the aroma chemicals are mixtures but still they are not very complex mixtures like the case of essential oils so for example this is GCMS of perfume and here the molecule limonene appeared limonene uh, or limonin can be directly used by perfumers you know things like limonin or things like cinnamic aldehyde or anisic aldehyde and this will appear as a molecule here and this is a singular component aroma chemical and so the, the, the when you're getting the peak when it's being detected and you, you can recompose the perfume quite easily most of the time uh, if they used rose essential oil or jasmine absolute or things like that you can still detect some of these elements here the problem is this doesn't go for everything this doesn't this isn't something that simply goes for everything how does that mean if you use a lot of resins a lot of resin oils a lot of natural aroma chemicals and natural essential oils this becomes much much more complex because if you think if you take something like agar wood which has dozens of aroma chemicals and you use it and each of the components are going to give you a peak so if you try to even um, build the composition you won't be able to rebuild it uh, the exact way it is done when some of these naturals are used like agar wood second thing is not not every uh, thing present in nature can be replicated in a lab so even if you find the molecule uh, certain chromons or certain uh, sesquiterpenes very complex you cannot actually get it in order to replicate it and if you try to replicate using the same agar wood oil or the same ambergris uh, it differs greatly from batch to batch and so uh, the, the question of re repeatability of perfumes the more naturals there are in a perfume the more difficult it is to replicate and this is a fact and I think that it's sometimes close to impossible to replicate entirely it's actually easier to replicate with the nose than it is with the GCMS for all of those of you who thinks that this machine is a magical thing because the per trained perfumer can actually guess materials better um, so in the case of, of, of certain uh, things like uh, predominantly sold perfumes uh, this can be uh, actually protected by means of captive molecules and trace amounts of high impact materials right which basically don't appear or may not appear at all but makes a huge difference to the perf or captive materials which are basically patented materials that you cannot use even if you know what it is 
like the case of ISO G Super versus ISO E Super. You cannot use ISO G Super, you can use ISO E Super. ISO, ISO G Super is used in molecule 101, for example. It's patented, so you can't use it. It's even announced what's the components of the perfume. So, the perfume that we have here, the GCMS is just some sort of shorts that shows you different molecules that are coming off. Different molecules, different molecules. In the case of, of being a synthetic, you can easily say, well, this, this comes from uh, phenyl ethanol, for example. So you can say, okay, that's phenyl ethanol, you just add phenyl ethanol, and you're getting your perfume composed. Most formulas of uh, predominantly being in the, what's in the market now are just synthetic. One plus one is equal to two. But how about when you have a component here that will get you 400 of these? Or 300 of these. So just one essential oil that will get you 400, 300 of these. And imagine if you're using lots of, of naturals to replicate. Which means basically that uh, naturals are, are, are better if you uh, think about protecting per your formula and so on. But it also shows that why a lot of companies don't actually attempt to copy natural perfumery houses because it's almost impossible that's one two because of something that is they're, they're catering for the mass market so if they try to use these naturals they're going to be expensive as well even if they're replicating so uh, there is no point for them however that takes us to the next point which is very important here i have a uh, a bottle of uh, perfume concentrate from a very famous uh, perfumery company and I just want to tell you something that these companies actually replicate their own stuff how does that work so they don't need actually to clone other perfumers this company itself would be producing something for let's say Tom Ford right and then the, they will reproduce the same perfume with a little bit of change to the formula and they will resell it in unregulated markets in uh, Central Asia maybe and in the Caucasus and, uh, and lots of areas on the Middle East so that they can basically enjoy the same real Tom Ford smell because it indeed is the same like Tom Ford in terms of the formula in terms of the molecules and components used, uh, if that's a Tom Ford, I'm not saying Tom Ford, I'm not mentioning it by name, I'm just saying that this is not Tom Ford's doing, guys. It's not the doing of Tom Ford or uh, Yves Saint Laurent or all of these companies. It's the doing of some of these companies that actually manufacture the perfume for these companies. So you outsource the process of making the perfume they they have something like let's say for example a perfume like francis kurkijian maybe he's the perfumer but a company produces the perfume for him and that exact company re-releases -re the perfume with a slight change to the formula in um, as clone perfumes so a lot of people have this understanding that the clone perfumes are coming from different companies it's the same companies they clone themselves just sell the oil without the fancy bottles it just shows you the amount of uh, uh, profits that they make because they can s if they can sell a liter of this oil for twenty dollars like that you know half a liter for twenty dollars or something and smells exactly the same like the original niche perfume that they're selling for hundreds of dollars it's because it's composed of these things here aroma chemicals which are very cheap and um, aroma chemicals can be don't get me wrong they can be really nice smelling and very nice smelling um, and in the old days there was a balance between these aroma chemicals and naturals even in French perfumery even until very recently early 19th early uh, 20th century uh, civet was still used you know uh, ambergris was still used uh, florals, absolutes, uh, and resins were the real thing were being used. Um, still is 
to an extent, you know. But now, the, the more they rely on, um, these companies rely on these synthetics, uh, the more we deviate away from real perfumery, which is a mix of uh, both media, like even the scientific-based perfumery as it's like not just mixing some essential oils and saying uh, it's an artisanal um, niche perfumery house, just the real perfumery which has chemistry, understanding lots of concepts and so on and so forth with aroma chemicals and chemistry and organic chemistry and shifts based and so on, etc., etc., uh, modern perfumery companies really, really took it to the extreme end of technology, where they really, uh, really use. If you if you take a look at the formula of some of these things, you have something here like citronellol, for example, it's occurring naturally, um, and uh, citronellol or geraniol or these kinds of things that exist in rose, they they, they now um, use them as singular molecules most of the time. So. In the GCMS, this will come off as citronellol, and you can know how much citronellol, and you can uh, put citronellol in your imitation formula, it will be the same, like the perfume you're cloning. But also, there is a sort of a magical, artistic thing that is lost when you stop using the florals, when you stop using the real ingredients, when you stop... Um, I mean, in, at Elixir Atar, we started with these... Uh, all natural atars and we did every now and then release something which has some synthetics in it and we are very clear about it and we do still believe in a mix, mixture of both uh, in some of the releases you know some people enjoy certain aspects of the perfume like extreme longevity and things that are um, very difficult to achieve entirely with all naturals um, but uh, we strive to cater to that taste and to this taste um, and explore and experiment and learn about the market and what what the people need not only in terms of economic gain you know but what people need at different on different levels um, but unfortunately some of these large companies are only about uh, maximizing profit and sort of I'll say a new term now technologizing perfumery which is if you say technologizing perfumery it's like saying that you can uh, make Picasso paintings using a computer right it's very difficult there is a lot of artistry involved so I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you enjoyed what we talked about today that it gave you an insight into how GCMS works and the cloning uh, I know it's very brief but it's just um, uh, sharing thoughts with you quickly without getting into details. These things can take hours and hours and hours of talking. Uh, during the course, we, we, ta we discuss these matters uh, with the students um, uh, through like various sessions that are all hours long. Uh, so I'm just um, sharing quickly with you uh, an inside aspect about perfumery so that you can know how uh, complex this field is and not as easy as it seems natural perfumery uh, mixing uh, some essential oils together and blah 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 you know anyways have a great day and enjoy the video thank you so much